Hello Cloud Gurus, I'm Tim Berry and I'm pleased to bring you another episode of GCP This Month. It's nearly the end of 2019 and you'd think that after Google Next UK last month, GCP announcements might have slowed down a bit, ready for a well-earned rest over the holidays. But the GCP product teams have kept up the momentum and continue to announce exciting new updates and features. In our Quick Bytes segment, we've got updates for Compute Engine, AutoML, and GKE, and we'll be taking a closer look at cloud code in our GCP gems. As always, we'll round off the episode and our year by celebrating our GCP Guru of the Month. So let's unwrap some presents early and jump right in. First, we have some announcements for Google Compute Engine. You can now attach up to 257 terabytes of persistent disk storage to each VM instance, a big boost over the previous limit of 64 terabytes. SSD persistent disks now offer double the right throughput for VM instances with 16 or more virtual CPU cores, and 100K of read IOPS for VM instances with 64 or more cores. Compute engine announcements aren't always the most exciting, but these updates are going to be really helpful for running large monolithic legacy apps and databases. And if your organization relies heavily on VMs, there have been some significant updates to OS logging, allowing you to set new OS logging policies, enable audit logging, and even grant SSH access to users outside of your organization. Moving on to AutoML Vision, GCP's drag and drop service for training image-based machine learning models, AutoML image classification is now generally available. And this includes AutoML Vision Edge, which allows you to train your models on GCP and then load them at runtime on mobile devices. Vision Edge now also supports TensorFlow.js in beta for deploying vision models to a range of JavaScript platforms, including most browsers and even server-side Node.js. Batch predictions are now available in beta for image classification and object detection. Using batch predictions offers a lower cost per inference, but it does require a long-running operation, so it's a trade-off against the immediate response of synchronous online predictions. Batch predictions are now available in beta for image classification and object detection. And finally, some updates to my favorite managed Kubernetes service, GKE. You can now choose a release channel when creating a GKE cluster, rather than selecting specific versions of Kubernetes for your masters and node pools. Choose the regular channel for production-ready releases, and you'll expect to see updates two to three times a month. The stable channel provides some extra certainty by using production-ready releases that have been observed on running clusters and only updates every few months. And if you really enjoy living life on the edge, there's the rapid release channel where you'll get new features and pain every week and no SLA. Vertical pod autoscaling is now available in GKE. This feature dynamically adjusts the CPU and memory resources assigned to a pod when the containers inside it are reaching the limits of the pod's capacity. But be warned, when a pod's capacity is changed, the pod has to be destroyed and replaced. Also, this feature is not compatible with horizontal pod autoscaling. It really only suits single pod stateful workloads. Google also don't recommend it for Java due to the limited visibility of the actual memory usage of the running container. Sadly, my joke about Java developers ignoring the limits of system memory anyway had to be cut for time. Node auto-provisioning is now available as part of the cluster autoscaler in GKE. Previously, the autoscaler could add and remove nodes from a set of node pools you've defined. Now it can add and remove the node pools themselves as well. Last but not least, here's an announcement that didn't quite make it into last month's episode, but will be very relevant to those of you handling sensitive data in GKE. You can now use envelope encryption for secrets in GKE to securely encrypt secrets using a cloud KMS managed key. And you can use customer managed encryption keys or CMEKs for persistent disks in GKE. These new features will help GKE administrators working in regulated industries or any organization where information security is a top priority. Our GCP gem this month is Cloud Code, which has been around in beta for a few months, but has now gone GA. Cloud Code is a bundle of tools designed to work with a developer's IDE to make writing, deploying, and debugging apps for Kubernetes an easy and integrated experience. Cloud Code is built on top of Scaffold, an open source development tool that provides a deployment framework for Kubernetes apps. Scaffold can run as a local developer service, watching for code changes and automatically rebuilding and deploying containers, or it can be integrated into an existing CI-CD system. Cloud Code is bundled for VS Code and IntelliJ, 
and provides various app development templates so you can get quickly up and running and deploying your app to GKE without having to write complex manifest files in YAML. Even more impressively, Cloud Code lets you perform live debugging of an app using breakpoints to inspect the stack as if you were developing locally, but while your app is running on Kubernetes. It's mind-blowing stuff. And the awesome doesn't stop there. Cloud Code understands deploying to different environments, includes a visual explorer for Kubernetes resources, and supports deploying to not just GKE, but Amazon EKS and Azure AKS. How cool is that? It's really designed to take away all of the toil of getting your app running on Kubernetes. So why not give it a try today? Congratulations to our Guru of the Month. This month's winner is Path Meta, a senior systems engineer from the UK. Congratulations, Path. We'll be sending you a swag pack, including a t-shirt, some stickers, and a hand-signed card. And why don't you see if you've got what it takes to be a Guru of the Month? Check out this month's new question at the link below. That's it for this episode of GCP This Month. What an amazing year it's been for GCP and for cloud computing in general. From everyone here at A Cloud Guru, have a safe and wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. I'll see you in 2020 and keep being awesome, cloud gurus. Bye.